Welcome to the very first episode of ATG All Things Geek. We've got an absolute Batfield episode for you. We're looking at the graphic novel The Killing Joke and also its DVD counterpart. John's having a look at some old school Batman toys and we're also going to do a Lego Batman film uh, trailer review. My name's Jake. I'm Ryan. I'm John. I'm Tom. And this is ATG. Uh, so Jake and I was actually a fan of the original Adam Moore, Brian Bland, or Bolland, I'm not ever really sure which way it's meant to be said, uh, Killing Joke story, um, basically as any comic geek really is. I mean, I know you're more of a to toy guy, but you guys grew up with comics, and everyone knew about, you know, obviously the Killing Joke being one of the, what, the cornerstone joke stories, really. Mm. Um, I wouldn't say... Would you kind of say it was the defining Batman slash Joker story? Because a lot of people would argue maybe the Dark Knight Returns is quite well, a big think, one, or I think this is quite iconic because of it tells one of the only uh, Joker origin stories, which is quite interesting, uh, and it, it also comes from the fact that Joker likes his uh, if he does have, have a, um, a history, he likes it to be multiple choice, and I think that was the uh, first reference in this actual comic. So I think it is iconic in the sense of it is the first Joker story that really stuck in people's minds. Okay, fair point. Um, so, I've just got kind of a couple of notes on the whole thing here. I mean, like 30 years after its publication, um, well, the book has become something more of a defining the Batgirl story for a huge uh, sort of would-be kind of comic fandom, despite the fact Miss Gordon's only role is to get shot in the spine. Um, spoiler alert, after we've said it. Um, <laughs> but if you haven't seen this it... This contains a lot of spoilers. Yeah, if you haven't seen it or read it, then... That was one of them. <laughs> yeah. We like to do it afterwards, so you can rewind and then watch the spoiler again. Um, <laughs> so... Obviously, with the Miss Gordon thing, just quickly switching to the DVD that uh, Tom is currently holding and modelling for us. Also available on Blu-ray. Um, I actually, which I didn't bring amazingly for this first show, but it did come with a limited edition figure from some retailers as well. Which is now deleted, sadly. It's no, no longer available. Oh, really? Is it really? Oh. There we go. Even more limited than I know. it originally was. Well, that's the, the clue is in the title of limited edition. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, but if you ever go into game recently, they've still got limited editions from like 2001 on their shelves. Yeah. Mainly because they're awful, he said, not being able to swear. Um, what was I saying about it? What was my last thing? Oh yes, about the yeah. actual show. So with, with uh, Batgirl's inclusion, there was a bit of a controversy really with the show. So again, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen the DVD, a lot of the first half of the film is based around Batgirl, which um, caused a lot of controversy because some people said you know, it's not part of the Killing Joke story. The Killing Joke story is all about, you know, it should be from page to page uh, recreation from the actual graphic novel. Whereas in the uh, film adaption, what they did is they added a whole kind of extra half of a film, effectively, on the front to give you more of a story about Batgirl. So Joe's not even in the first half, effectively. Right. It's just about the relationship between Batman and Batgirl. And, you and know, a lot of people were quite angry at the fact that they made a sexual relationship between uh, Batman and Batgirl as well. I think that angered a lot of people. Um, Made Pornhub happy, but yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I think what the um, what the writers wanted is the fact that they couldn't get a full length film out of just the killing joke, so they had to, had to add something, um, and they decided to explore so the they origins. They decided so, to add porn. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? But they, uh, yeah. So they decided That's to the fans. <laughs> <laughs> they decided to add the origins of Batgirl uh, to make it a little bit more. Um, okay, I've I've never read this or seen it, but you said the word porn. <laughs> so next week we'll be introducing you know, Paul to Spice you know. So next week, John reviews The Killing Joke. No, oh. I think, to be perfectly honest with you, like, my opinion is that like, I'm a big fan of the graphic novel, like, a huge fan of the graphic novel, and uh, having that extra bit at the beginning didn't bother me too much, because for people that hadn't read the graphic novel, they needed to have some kind of... Um, they needed to care about Batgirl, mm -hmm. in, you know, because the... The big thing is obviously, you know, when, spoiler alert, spoiler alert here, but when she gets shot and the Joker shoots her and, and that obviously paralyses her, the, the audience is needed to care about the character. And obviously, if you just went and picked up the book and you'd never read anything before, you wouldn't necessarily do that. So, w with the film adaptation, I think... Might as well have been Derek from accounting. Exactly. I mean, yeah. in the film, if it just went straight into to where the, the Killing Jack graphic novel starts, I don't think people would care enough about her being shot, and that's why they put it in. Okay. Did they need the sex in it? I don't think so. I mean, personally, I think that putting the, the sex into it made Batgirl a lot less of a, a character and, and took away a lot of her um, 
her personal sort of struggle and story and everything, and just made her a, a hormonal woman that that was in love with Batman. Mm. And I think that they could have done it a lot better. I think that they could have done it much better and made her a much more powerful character, as opposed to this little girl that was just in love with the the brooding Dark Knight and. Because what happens is she actually has sex with him and then decides to hang up the Batgirl mantle because she doesn't want to get too attached to Batman. Right. And I think that, that that was where I was disappointed with it. I didn't have an issue with the fact that they put extra in the film, that they made it about Batgirl to start with. I had an issue that they made it about her hormones and her relationship and her sexual relationship. And it kind of took a lot of the, the emphasis of what the, the, the story itself was about. That's my personal view. Well, I'm, I'm a huge fan of um, Batman the Animated Series, and obviously the, the films that came before that. Um, within the Animated Series, we had a couple of films. We had um, Sub-Zero, Mask of the Phantasm, which are great film adaptations. Mystery of the Batwoman. Mystery of the Batwoman as well, yeah, very underrated. But does this lead on from those at all? Is there, or is this a whole new... I know there's lots of worlds of DC... Mm. Is this a new world, or does this have any? Does this have any well, sort the, of? The the oh, come on, Ryan. Let no, Ryan, Ryan, uh, Ryan take it. Well, yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> Tom. But uh, yeah, this is Ryan. Ryan, Ryan this is yeah. what I get excited about. Right. So everyone's always been like more about Marvel, and you know, I, I, even I grew up watching more Marvel like kids TV shows. You know, X Men, which everyone knows, like one of the greatest things ever time. Like the animated. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? It's in, in stereo. Yeah. It's like wow. Stereo. I didn't even know there was another option at that point. Press eight 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 for subtitles. No, no, that's <laughs> just yeah. that's why I remember. Um, um, sorry, Ryan. Yeah, like Fantastic Four, Iron Man, um, you know, and all those Marvel anime things, which were amazing as a kid to watch. Um, and then I kind of got into the Batman and Superman animated stuff, like as I got a little bit older, when it was kind of rerun. But it had a darkness about it. Yeah, it had that kind of gothic kind of look to it. That kind of almost um, that weird thing as well, where like blimps and everything were still. It was like film noir, but like in a cartoon, which was like, as a kid, was a really odd thing to see, because you're not used to having like an art style in an actual kind of kid show, effectively. But, so what's happened after that then, is Marvel started focusing, I think, more on kind of live action things, and as we all know, the Marvel Expanded Universe is one of the greatest film franchises, and has expanded beyond more films, and I mean, it's planned all the way to, what, 2021, I think, is yeah, the... the like, beyond. Yeah, beyond yeah. that. Um, however, DC, I think, has succeeded in one thing that Marvel have not done, is DC animated standalone films, which is their straight to DVD collections. I absolutely love these because a lot of them, there are some that are in their own set universes. There's the Superman slash Batman Public Enemies and um, Doom, I think it is, there's a couple um, in the, set in one universe there. And then you've got what's the new Justice League um, series, which I think we can see one of them, it's actually slightly out of shot, but he's a Justice League Throne of Atlantis, which is part of the new kind of Justice League universe, which is brilliant, which has a Justice League War. Uh, Justice League vs. Teen Titans and the upcoming Justice League Dark, which is based on the Dark Justice League, so kind of Constantine, Dead Man, Swamp Thing kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, so when you have these things, they take graphic novels, famous stories, favourite things, and they put them into their own storylines, their own separate independent worlds, um, where they adapt the graphic novels and completely make them into these animated features as if they were a movie to begin with. They were only quite you know, relevant and quite, um, uh, how do you say, like, um, uh, I'm trying to think of the word now, when they're quite accurate to the actual graphic novels, as if they take, a bit like how Watchmen was almost shot for shot in a lot of ways, like as a live action film, they do the same with the DC animated stuff a lot of the time. Yeah, straight from the comic book, wasn't it? Exactly, and so the killing joke, um, so the really extremely long winded answer to your question, John, yeah. it is in its own universe. <laughs> that was the longest <laughs> answer to the most basic me, question. You, ask the question again. No. <laughs> I wish I'd never asked. Yeah. Yeah. That's but I happened. think that's, like Ryan's hit the nail on the head, though, and that's what's nice is that you, you, know, you pick up the killing joke. Off the DVD shelf, that's what you've got. That's mm. what you're getting. You're, you're getting a, a beginning, a middle, and an end. Um, so obviously, it appeals to people that don't know the others or haven't seen the others. Okay. Um, so if you were to, if you were to, because I'm I'm very big on marking things out of ten. Um, we'll go down the line and we'll ask ourselves, you know, what what would you give this? Uh, a, what would you give the comic book? And B, what would you give the uh, the film? Uh, out of ten, yep. and then and then just sort of give your reasonings for why it didn't quite make ten, or if you gave it ten out of ten, great. So Tom, uh, I have to say the comic book I have to give probably a nine. Uh, I think the reason why the reason why it's not a ten for me is um, I think there are some things that are left un unexplained at the end, uh, like what happens with Batman. 
and the Joker. Like, there's a lot of theories online, but um, again, you should have said spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Because I haven't <laughs> seen it either. <laughs> uh, but, but yeah, so so I think that that adds intrigue to it, of course. But um, as a comic book reader and knowing that uh, the Killing Joke isn't going to come back, it's, it sort of does ask those questions. Um, for the film, I'd probably give that an eight. Uh, purely because of the uh, the sexual relationship between Batman and Batgirl, um, and as Jake said, the reason why it's all hormonal, um, it sort of took something away from Batgirl for me, uh, for a much loved character for everyone. Um, I don't think it was as good as the graphic novel, but it's still pretty up. It's still pretty high in my opinion. Jake, book. <coughs> Look, if, I, if I'm going to rate it fairly, I'm probably going to give it an 8, eight out of 10. 8 bats out of 10. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going to give it That's eight. a high amount of bats. Um, just because, I mean, as a, as a standalone book, I mean, it... it it's and you've got the hardback version there, haven't I you? I have the hardback Which version. Which isn't available anymore. Is it not? I don't think so. I oh. think it's only in softback now. I could oh, be wrong. There you go. Kids, I, did, I, didn't I didn't know wrong. that. I didn't know that. But no, I'm going to give it an 8, just because, I mean, to look at and to read, it reads very easily. Um, it's very nice to look at in regards to, to sort of how it is as a comic book. Um, and as I said before, it, as a book, it's it's a beginning and an end, you know. That, that to me, I like it, you know. So I, I can pick this up, read it, put it down, and I don't have to go away with too much else. So I'll, I'll give that an 8. Um, in regards to the DVD, it's hard, I mean, because obviously... Uh, you had Kevin Conroy come back. You had uh, Mark Hamill come back to, to voice, obviously, the Batman yeah. and uh, Batman and Joker, respectively. Um, I think the problem was, though, is that it, it felt very much like neither of them really wanted to be there. You know, what I mean, it wasn't. In my, personally, I did, I've seen them or heard them do better things. Mm. So a lot of what was sold about it was obviously, you know, those, those actors voicing the characters. They are getting on a bit. And obviously, sorry? They are getting on a they bit. They are getting on a bit, no <laughs> they are. But it was, there was so, so much excitement. When I heard that the King and Joke was being, being turned into a, a, a DVD animated version and, and they were sort of the people voicing the characters, I thought, you know, this is a win-win. Um, but if I was to grade it, I, I think it would have to be about a six, just because it's, it's it's not that great do in you, comparison to Do them. you feel like the, um, because cause it had uh, those those artists voicing um, those characters like you would have had in the animated series of the early 90s, did you feel like it was going to be more like the animated series? And, but it was oh. it almost like you were hearing those voices in a child's cartoon, <clears throat> but it had quite adult content. Mm. Did no, that make... No, it's funny enough, because obviously I was younger when the cartoon was on, and I'm now older when this was released, so it kind of felt like they had grown with, with you. Me, if yeah, 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 okay. So I think that the disappointing thing was is that I mean it's it's, it's rated a fifteen, you know, and, and obviously if you've if you've read the graphic novel, if you've seen the film, um, it, you know it does get quite violent, and there there is the whole <coughs> sexual explore exp, um, exploitation of, of Barbara that the Joker does, you know, and he takes the pictures and, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's more so takes the film, pictures. Isn't it? Yeah, I mean it <coughs> is dark, and I mean as a, as an adult watching it, it's, it is dark. Um, but no, I mean, it, it was just more that the voice actors didn't, I've seen them or heard them do better things, mm. so the expectation for, for them being involved was higher, and the actual, it, it doesn't translate well, that's, I think that's, that's what I'm getting at, it doesn't they, translate well from page to screen, it's a very good book, it's not a very good film. And okay. they hyped it up so much, didn't they? There was so much publicity about it, and yeah. Right. Okay. John, what are your... <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, haven't I haven't read this, and I haven't <laughs> seen this, yes. um, so That's I'm going to give him uh, a 0 out of 10. Um, but I, uh, I will have watched this um, in the next point. couple of months, I would say, hopefully, um, and then uh, I'll get back to you. What about a TBC out of 10 rather than a 0? Yeah. Oh, well, considering, considering the artists that it has uh, doing the voices, um, and considering I'm a massive Batman fan, even though I haven't seen this yet, um, I would hopefully like to give it maybe an 8 or a 9. I reserve 10s, you know, I, I don't give 10s out lightly. Um, <laughs> but I'll pass these says over this now. to Ryan. Oh, hello. Um, okay, so first of all, like what the idea is much hasn't really been said about the graphic novel, um, I would probably give that uh, 8 out of 10. Um, <laughs> my only small things about it. I almost didn't feel like it was long enough. I felt that like there was still some more that could be in it. I kind of wanted to see some more. 
crazy from the Joker. I felt there was still <coughs> some depraved levels he hadn't quite gone to still somehow. Um, and I kind of just felt like there was just that one extra bit of madness missing from it. Because um, as you know, I am an absolutely massive Joker fan. Um, Show the tattoo. <laughs> I've got Joker in on the back of my neck. Uh, I got drunk one time in America and got it tattooed. Um, before the Dark Knight, by the way. It doesn't like, actually say Joker. <laughs> <laughs> that's, the, that's the biggest joke of it all. <laughs> what are your ratings? Uh, okay, so yeah, 8 out of 10 for the graphic novel. Um, now, I'm going to defend the Killing Joke DVD a little bit here. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Right, what are you going to do? Ryan, Tom okay, Ryan, Ryan, Ryan likes everything. <laughs> no matter what it is. You could have a cat's head in a sock, and Ryan would, <laughs> Ryan would give it still, a strong yeah, seven. Yeah, give it a strong seven because oh, I like the way that the head moved around within the sock. He's that kind of guy. Let him defend. Let him defend. No, 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 carry on. No, carry on. There's any point anymore? No, no, no. It's fine, Matt. Okay, my my defence for it is right. So I actually, despite the fact I just said I was one of the biggest Joker fans ever, um, it was quite late to read the actual graphic novel. I only read it within the last couple of years, which is actually kind of embarrassing when you think about it. However, so when I um, heard about this coming out, I was more excited about it as a standalone thing. I try not to weirdly draw comparisons to, despite the fact a lot of the time they are like, based on graphic novels um, and are, they attempt to do shot for shot recreation between the two, I do try and think of these as standalone things and judge them in their own right. So in that respect, um, I absolutely loved this one. Um, I loved the beginning part. I, again, the only thing I would say I wasn't keen on was a bit, they went a bit too far, I think, with the Batgirl and Batman relationship. Um, I actually think it kind of put some, uh, a bit of a sign I didn't really like to Batman, which is something I didn't think I would ever say. Um, I wasn't really comfortable with the way he was dealing with the situation. I didn't think he would be so fallible in that instance, weirdly. Um, so that was kind of the end of it I didn't really, I wasn't massively keen on, but only when it got to certain points. I liked the eye concept of it, I liked the build up to it, uh, but the payoff I just didn't think was potentially really worth it. Now we get into the second part, which is more obviously based around uh, the Joker uh, and Batman, you know, the actual graphic novel content, um, and this is the bit I absolutely loved. Um, some of the shots that they've done in this are incredibly difficult and beautiful, considering when you look at the page that you know they're taken from, the artwork in there is incredible, but it's also really unusual and really stylized. Mm -hmm. um, to try and recreate that in an animated form, like a moving format, you know, so what you've got is a still image to work for, you've got to work out the before and the after, you know, the continuous motion of a shot that doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what I think they did really well in this. Um, but so, you know, and I, I do disagree slightly with the voice acting in it, actually. I loved it because I actually think the reason they sounded like that is because I think they're meant to. Because they've been playing the game so long, this is it, yeah. you know, it's like, one of these days, we're, you know, we're going to have to, you know, end up killing each other. It's one of the big concepts of the actual film. Yeah. You know, that's the whole bit at the end, when the you're standing one, in the rain, it's like, bad day. Thing. You know, yeah. like, you know, let me help you. Like, I'm sorry, but yeah. no. I must admit, though, in my defence, like the, the bit at the end. No, no, no I've no, not seen it. I'm not gonna. No, we're done spoilers all the way through. But no. what I'm saying is, the end shot, the standing in the rain bit, I genuinely liked, and it did claw it back for me a little bit, mm. and that's why I rated it. <laughs> But no, the end was very. The, the end is very good. I so will, what you I will agree with you. Uh, on that. Just very quickly as well, the the uh, tunnel of madness effective bit with Jim Gordon, the torture of Jim Gordon. Mm -hmm. For I think it's one of the greatest animated sequences I've seen, um, as well with the audio to go with it. That I've seen in a DC animated film today. Um, so I actually give this. I give this a uh, eight. Nine, I will go with an eight out of ten. Um, but so purely because it's great to see Mark, and this was actually mostly um, became about because of a fan petition really, yep. the fans really campaigned for this and even Mark Howell himself said he would come out of retirement, so he actually retired from the Joker character, said he would come out of retirement to do the Killing Joke, he always made that a very famous point that if it came to it he would definitely do it. Mm -hmm. um, something I would advise quickly look up on YouTube as well, there was I think it was a Comic Con, they actually had two different voice actors from the Joker um, doing reading the last part, um, they even had a John DiMaggio uh, known as Bender from Futurama who did uh, Under the Red Hood's Joker, which was a very good Joker. Um, read excerpts from The Killing Joke last speech. I really recommend looking that up on uh, elsewhere on YouTube. But say, look up the different, I think it's like uh, three different jokers do Killing Joke or something like that. But I would definitely look that up. But yeah, I'm going to stick with eight, eight out of ten, I think. All right. Amazing. So there we go. So um, overall, rated quite highly. Mm. I mean, they are, it is iconic. It's an iconic book. It's an iconic watch. It's definitely worth watching if you haven't seen it. Obviously, there's a lot of spoilers in this video, but <laughs> hopefully you'll go and check it out. Yeah, and let us know what you think as well. Yep, let us know what you think in the comments. Um, Just uh, hit like 
down the bottom left hand corner <laughs> of your... Is it over here? It's over is there. It, would, would it be it's like, is it where, near where Jay is? Is it, is it there? Press the light. Just press know. there. Yeah. You mate, it's not even funny. Yeah. I don't like that. That's our quick comic and DVD wrap up. That wasn't quick at all. Next up, we're going to go over to John with a bit of a toy review. Hello and welcome to my section of the show and I will be talking about vintage toys and action figures. Um, massive, massive toy fan, uh, been collecting for the past 25 years. Um, I love Thundercats, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, uh, Batman the Animated Series, uh, He-Man, uh, Brave Star, you name it, I love it, okay? Um, but not girls toys obviously, not, <laughs> not, not Barbie or Cindy or She-Ra or Care Bears, you know, none she of that. She-Ra is actually a good toy right now. Well, yeah, that's well, less, less so about Apparently that's for another episode. Um, but uh, I'm, not, I'm not a huge comic book fan. Um, I like comic book movies but I'm not a huge comic book fan. Uh, so, but this is, this is basically the chance for uh, these guys to ask me a little bit about what I collect. What are my favourite lines of toys to collect? Uh, why I collect those toys, um, and so uh, we'll go down the line, and uh, you can each ask me questions. So uh, we'll start with Ryan. We'll start with you. Oh, hey, John. <laughs> Thanks for having me on the show, John. <laughs> Shut up, Ryan. Ask me a question. Okay. Um, favorite line to collect? Oh, tough one. Um, <clears throat> it was Thundercats up until the point I completed it. So, when I completed the Thundercats uh, toy line, I got all the different figures, I got all the different play sets, I got all the different vehicles. Um, I then had to sort of move on and go, right, well this is a complete collection now, it can sit on the shelf proudly. Um, there are some toy lines where it is just impossible to collect everything, because there were so many different variants, there were so many different... Um, colours and vehicles and play sets to buy. Clearly right at you as well. Well, it's not the wrong it's not, it's not answer. Because uh, you, you could end up, uh, you know, you could end up spending thousands and thousands, and believe me, I have, uh, on this stuff. And you just, you, you need to know when to stop. Um, my problem is I'll, I'll, I'll start collecting a line, I'll, I'll get a bit nostalgic about a certain figure I had as a child, I'll buy that one figure, and then there's a completest part of me that says, right, I need to go and get everything now. I need to go and get the lot. Buy it all, John. Yeah, exactly. Buy the voices in my head say buy it all. <laughs> um, so I can't just have one, I've got to have a complete set. So um, at the moment, my favourite toy line to collect is Batman the Animated Series from Kenner, which lasted through from uh, the toy line, lasted through from 1993 uh, to about 1997. Um, and is that just the original folks? I know they had like the new adventures of uh, Batman and Robin, didn't they? Or something? they were, yeah, they're the, um, that, that's, but... that's sort of what. I, but all the the figure molds were the same. Okay, so is that what it is from the full series? Yeah, all so, the way to the end. So the, the, the figure molds were the same. Okay. Uh, and in between that time, they they released action figures for the um, for Batman Forever and Batman and Robin. Um, but the, you know, the less said about those, the better. <laughs> um, no, the toy lines were good. Oh, the toy lines were good, but uh, so yeah, yeah at the good. moment, Batman the Animated Series, because there's there's probably about 150 different Batmen you can get in different outfits. Um, I'm proud of you on this yeah, yeah, there's a few, um, <laughs> none of which he actually wore in the TV series at all. Uh, he was just what? renowned. What yeah. The little white number. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That well-known bat outfit. That's, I think you'll find that's Antarctic Batman. Oh, right. For whenever he <laughs> had to defeat foes <laughs> in the <laughs> deepest, darkest, snowy region. He well, no, when he, when he went to the Fortress of Solitude, surely. So that's right, his social that. Superman <laughs> visit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. This is his visit to yeah. Superman. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Bruce, we said it was dressed down Friday. <laughs> uh, oh, OK, I'm wearing this uh, white number. What's this one, John? Oh god, no, don't, don't, don't test me. That's, uh, that's, that's, that's like... That's a weird crossover with Jurassic Park. No, that's, like, that's like, like laser light Batman He's or something. He's got like a, a CS written on his shoulder. He came, he came with a, uh, ah, oh, Commando Strike. Commando, Commando Strike! strike. <laughs> Commando Strike! <laughs> we should have known yeah. with the leopard print. Yeah, 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 sure. uh, yeah, look, here is Commando Strike. Show he, the leopard print on the side, it's actually... Yeah, he came mm. with, um, 
no. with <laughs> right. I, be, I have reason to believe he was in the uh, in the bat copter uh, that also came with a parachute as well. Okay. A bat uh, parachute. The bat parachute. A bat chute, if you will. Ooh. Um, oh, oh no, it's not so Oh no. Last one. What about this zany little man? Oh, that's Lightning Strike Batman. Lightning Strike Batman. Lightning Strike Batman. Uh, came with. Well, I have got a version, but he comes. He's uh, real lightning. No, he's got a <laughs> cloak that surrounds himself. That he surrounds himself in. Does it make him? Oh, invisible? that's actually pretty cool. It doesn't make him invisible, oh, but okay. it is impervious to bullets. No, oh, okay. there you go. Ah. Yeah, yeah. suck it, Superman. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Lightning strike, Batman. Lightning strike. It'd be good if they did like a crossover with Static Shock, where he was just not having anything. Static like Static Batman couldn't go any balloons and you know <laughs> nipples hair. Not yeah. very good at kiss parties. Static well, Shock. La Batman. My last one from the. I thought you said show. last one. Last one. Yeah, yeah but he's probably seen. I've just ones. seen another one that I like. Kind of piggyback in this one. What's this one? That was so, a scuba. Okay, so um, he's it, got a different head. Yeah. So okay. When the animated series he moved knows. on into series four, they still classed it as Batman the animated series, but the animation had, the animation had totally changed, completely changed, um, and it had a more sleek kind of late nineties, early two thousands feel about it. Thank you, John. Yeah, it's all right. <laughs> did you make his head wobble? No, you didn't. Yeah. Oh, to show uh, see, you should have shown the wobbly head. See. Darkness yeah. fills my body! <laughs> what was the reason for the wobbly head? Uh, do you know what? Um, I think it's to make them more... Uh, they, have, they had lots of clip-on capes and cloaks and stuff okay. Uh, okay. that they could change and that was the reason for that. Um, cool. But, <clears throat> yeah, I, I love Batman the Animated Series. I think the figures are great. There weren't too many variants of different characters mm -hmm. as well. If you go on to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, for example, there is... There is, I think, something ridiculous like 48 variants on Shredder alone. Wow. wow. Isn't that because they're like really weird things, like, you know, like cup making turtles and TV <laughs> repairman turtles yes. and shelf yes. putting up yeah. turtles? I'm just looking around the room. They, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Cup making Shredder. Darth Vader turtles. <laughs> they had, um, they had <laughs> troll doll turtles. Troll doll turtles. What, is it right? trolls in the big yeah, hair? Yeah, the things. big hair. Uh, they also had Star Trek original series turtles. So Leonardo was Mr. Spock, Raphael was Captain Kirk. <laughs> oh my Kirk. god, I want those. Yeah, I want them. But, you know, you try getting one that's unboxed for less than 50 quid. Can you imagine? Russ Spoon, we need. Or a pizza. Yeah. <laughs> in the sewers. <laughs> it was uh, pretty good. That crossover. So, what is it about the toys that bring back this sort of. We're, we're jumping to Tom's question. <laughs> oh, that's fine. Uh, you uh, asked a load of figures. No, go on, Tom, you've started, so you shall finish. So, yeah, so what is it about the toys that bring back this sort of nostalgic feel? Um, does it take you back to your childhood when you used to watch the animated series? What is it about the collecting mm. that really gets you excited? Uh, I, I think it's the thrill of the find. So, okay. going into charity shops, going to car boot sales, going to Comic Con, yeah. going to toy fairs and finding all these different things is just sort of like this, this wow factor. You do end up with lots of doubles. Right. Lots of doubles. Because you, you, you always say to yourself, I'll take a list with me and I'll work out whether I've got these or not. And then you get there and you go, I haven't got a list. <laughs> That's 15 quid. Have I got it already? And then you get it home and you go, oh damn. <laughs> I love when you ask me as if I I've know got what it. you've got. I've got it already. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it does have a nostalgia effect with me as well, because I had a lot of this stuff as a kid, and some of these bits behind us are mine from originally from when I was a kid as well. Um, yeah, they're just, they're great ornaments. They're great shelf fillers. They look fantastic on the shelf. Uh, I was an only child as well, so, um, and I won't lie, I didn't particularly have a lot of friends at school, so toys were my outlet. Mm. You know, toys were my like outlet. comic books were for us. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So you you escape into a different world. Yeah, exactly. You got you got lost in this sort of you, you know. Still getting a bit emotional. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry. Um, Hold me right. Yeah. <laughs> I, feel like I, 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 think, well, I was more. I think I was more into toys as a kid than comics. I think I was more like yeah. you. Like, but then you know, I've gained a lot of my toy knowledge. I just had toys. John's uh, normally I show John a figure, and John goes, "Oh, that's from this series." I can show him a weapon like that's that big. I've got no idea what it is. I've got it in a charity shop for like a penny or something. And he'll go, "Oh, that's from like season six of like the <laughs> yeah. Batman series." But that's the variant that had this cape, but this thing. But if you had the one with the blue cape, then that one's on fire, and you can't have that one because that one's <laughs> made of gold. And, and I've got no idea. But this guy's like a walking encyclopedia for knowledge of that stuff. Yeah. Um, there's something about figures, though, isn't it? That's oh, not yeah. There yeah. is something. Was... Even as an adult, there is something about buying a toy. Even a new toy, getting it out of the box or un unpacking it from its packaging where it's been delivered, and just 
putting it up. Yeah. I don't think it's asked me the other day. Like, we were at Comic Con, funny enough, and like it's a good question to ask you, really, because she asked me, and I didn't really have a good answer. She goes, um, "I don't get it." She goes, "What's the point of them?" I was like, "Well, because we're not playing with them, and you know, like no one actually ever confesses to playing with them. But even though we probably all have had a pew moment, <laughs> let's be honest. But like, um, I haven't. <laughs> um, but like, what what do you kind of what would you classify? Like, if someone actually came up to you and said, "Okay, so what's the purpose of them? Why why have you got them? Is it is it just as a statue type thing, or is it?" I think I think uh, everybody collects something or other, whether it be beer mats, stamps, bottle tops. Do you know what I mean? Everybody stop listing my hobbies. <laughs> <laughs> Your sad, lonely hobby. Um, but lots lots of people have have collections. Mine just you know I'm not as bad as some of the people out there, but my my collections just sort of stretch to toys, and I love them. I absolutely love them. Do you know what's great though about getting a toy on Christmas Day or your birthday? is your parents could never wrap an action figure properly. Yeah, you knew, <laughs> it, was, you knew, you knew it was an action figure. figure. He, you just you had to look a flat it. back and a bubbly front. Yeah. And you sort of go, yeah, what could it be? Yeah, what could it be? Yeah, it's, it's finding out what action figure it is. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, My parents got around that by just getting two. And normally, like, one that I wanted and, like, a really awful, cheapy one that was of a series I'd never heard of, you know, like... Battle snails or something like that. Stark oh, Mars. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> M A R S Mars, and it's some weird GI Joe knockoff. But then what they do is then they put it over the top to make like a perfect rectangle cube, but just like the hollow bits around the side. Yeah. And that was perplexing as a child. That's the only way you could get around not knowing what it was until yeah, they worked it out. Yeah. But yeah, I, go on. No, it's just. Oh, okay. <laughs> Jake, what's what's your question for me? What's the hardest toy? What what's been the hardest toy for you to get hold of, and why was it important to have that one? Oh, a t whoa, a, whoa! Like a, the eyebrow raiser. Yeah. A toy that still eludes me to this day, or a toy that I've, yeah. I I yeah, was the, excited the, to get and then one of both. Quick round up on both. Okay, all right. So a toy that still eludes me to this day is the Channel Six news van from 1990, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Basically, it was a respray of the Turtles van that came out two years previous. It was just respray blue with yellow and red stickers on the side with Channel 6 News. Um, and it came with a, a April O'Neil in a green jumpsuit rather than a yellow jumpsuit. <laughs> uh, mint in boxed, they go for between six and seven hundred pounds. Wow. Um, out of the box, more than likely out of the box it's going to have pieces missing. If you find one with, with all the pieces, you're still going to be looking at three figures, but a lower end three figures, maybe 150, 200 quid. Um, <clears throat> a toy that I was absolutely over the moon to get, uh, it's difficult to say. I suppose um, a figure that eluded me for a long time until I discovered a lot of action figure communities on Facebook and stuff. Um, was I was with you actually in Comic Con, and I really, really wanted a Clayface. Yes. Okay. So I really wanted a Batman animated series Clayface. And you this, bought every figure but Clayface. Don't you? Yeah. <laughs> and this this guy had one. It was like the last stand we went to. Uh, we were like really tired, and I just saw a few carded figures hanging up, and there was one mint on its card, and the guy wanted fifteen quid for it. I nearly bit his hand off, and I just went, Yeah, take my money. <laughs> take my money. Um, so yeah, I was I was over the moon to get that, and I recently got a 1989, 1989, sorry, uh, 1993 Kenner Batmobile from the animated series, mint in its box. Uh, I got it for 25 quid because wow. a guy was just desperate for money, so I exploited him basically. Uh, he <laughs> originally, you're watching, he, yeah, he's sorry, got it. Um, he he had it up for 50 quid. Um, and you knocked him down to fifteen. Twenty-five. Twenty-five. 25. And no one, no one was budging on it. No, but you could, you could get fifty quid for a box of Batman. I just think it was a bit of obviously a slow week. Yeah. And uh, I said, mate, I've got twenty-five put in my PayPal account. I'll pay for it now. And he went, yeah, okay. I needed to buy the kids Christmas presents or something. I was like, no. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. <laughs> John, your segment's getting more and more emotional. I know. Yeah. I, know. <laughs> I felt, I felt bad for about eight seconds, and then it arrived, and I was like. <laughs> you know, um, so uh, yeah, uh, th th that's me in action figures. Uh, Brilliant. Anyone got anything else they'd like to ask before we round? What on? is the rarest uh, action figure Batman you've got here? The rarest one I've got there. Yeah. Um, to be honest with you, they're all they're all pretty generic. Yeah. Um, 
I was really happy to get uh, Sky Assault and Red Alert Batman. Sky Assault is the blue one with the silver chest. Unfortunately, he's got um, he's got a bit of paint chipped off the front, but I think he's just a really cool colour combination. Yeah. Um, and Red Alert is the guy just over by the TV on the right. I like um, that one. Yeah. Paid a little bit more for him, but he is mint. You know, he's he's got his I've got his accessories, um, but he's not on a card. But yeah, that's me. Amazing. Over the coming months, obviously, we'll look a bit more in detail at particular toys and particular lines um, and go into a bit more detail specifically about the toys, yeah, John? Definitely about the toys. Excellent. Um, all right, next up, we're going to do a quick trailer review to round up this Batfield episode. Okay, so next up, we're going to be looking at the Lego Batman film trailer number four. <laughs> right, right. right. Yeah, uh, you know what it, it must be great to be Batman. Batman, we love you! Thank you. I'm blushing super hard under the mask. Thanks, Batman! Pray God. Thanks, Batman! Yeah. I can only imagine he's going home right now to party the night away, surrounded by friends and lady activewear models. Hey, computer. I'm home. I'm home. I'm home. Master Bruce, your greatest fear is clouds. No, it's being a part of a family again. No, now it's snake clouds because you put that idea in my head. Sir, you need to take responsibility for your life, and it starts by raising the young orphan you adopted. Wee! I thought I was being sarcastic. Hello, secret camera. We built this city. What? It's the bat. Oh my gosh, look, it's the bat sub. Oh, don't touch that. The bat sub. Don't touch that either. It's the bad kayak. No. Do I get a costume? I love it, but his pants are just a little tight. I got an idea. It's better. I can only look you in the eyes right now. Hi, Batman. No way. Come catch your greatest enemy. Superman is my greatest enemy. Superman's not a bad guy. Then I'd say that I don't currently have a bad guy. I am fighting a few different people. I like to fight around. Hi, Barbara Gordon, new police commissioner. It's my dream for the police force to team up with Batman. What? Wouldn't that be better? I hate everything you just... Nice. Initialize master build. Got it. Here you go, Elbow, I need the back of the Yes, we did it. Pretty cool, huh? Why did you build this thing with only one seat? Uh, because last I checked, I only had one butt. Let's go defeat the Joker. Woo! We're going on a family trip. I can wear my costume, too. Well, luckily for us, you left your costume back in... Oh, no, under your clothes. That's perfect. <laughs> Really, really cool. Right. Thoughts? Um, Just, like, quick fire thoughts off everyone. Okay, uh, I, I, I liked it. I liked the first Lego movie. Thought it was quite good fun. That looks like a lot of fun. Yep. Yeah. Um, but wasn't there already a Batman Lego movie straight to DVD? Yes. Yes. Was that supposed to be sort of taking itself too seriously or something? Or it's quite a was it just Lego a cash in? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's just more of a cash and had a long range of cash ins to do with Batman and DC Lego straight to Blu ray or DVD movies. This is like a cinema one, so it's too much expensive with expensive movie stars like yeah. Zach Galifianakis. <laughs> and Will on it as well. He's oh yeah, that guy. Yeah. He's in it as well. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm, I, I look forward to seeing it. It looks like good fun. Yep. Yeah, I look forward to it. I don't look forward to the fact that I'm probably going to buy all the Lego sets that come out regarding it, because yep. especially the one with the different bat costumes, because I literally now want one of everything I just saw in that trailer. <laughs> yeah. um, and actually, I think I could genuinely pull off a Rasta Batman kind of look. I, I prob yeah, I'm going to keep the trousers though. I think yeah. I'm not going to do like some weird rip thing. I would keep those, but I think I could rock that look. Yeah, yeah. No, I think it looks fantastic. I mean, obviously, it's a, a follow-on from the the hugely, hugely successful Lego Movie, um, and I like the way that they're keeping elements of it with like the master builder stuff and that yeah. kind of thing. Um, I think it looks. I mean, the trailer itself is full of humour. Uh, my personal highlight is the the whole I'm fighting around bit. I think that's that's very funny. Yeah. I'm fighting um, a few different people. Also, as well, um, recently announced, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but the Lego minifigure collection yeah. have just announced as well that their next line in January, I believe, is the Lego Batman movie. So 20 figures. In 20 figures based around the film. Um, 
someone very excited about that. But yeah, I mean, in regards to Lego sets as well, I think there's about 15, 20 sets that they're releasing. I've seen four or five, like, just off the bat, like uh, the Joker's Balloon Escape and the, the new Lego movie, yeah. Batman movie, um, Batcave kind of set. There's, yeah. I think there's a, uh, the, what, I can't remember what it's called, uh, the, the giant bat walker yeah. dog I mean, thing. But, but all in all, um, yeah, a lot of fun, looks like it's going to be really good. Yeah, um, I'm really, really excited for it, as everyone else has said. I'm, I loved the first Lego Bat, uh, the first Lego movie. Um, and I like the fact that they're using uh, Will Arnett again because he was Batman in the uh, Lego movie as well. So they're sort of taking that and then putting their own spin on it. Um, I think most of the Justice League is in it as well. We saw a little bit of Superman, I think, uh, quite... Uh, in one trailer I saw, I think I've saw... Yeah, I think it's like trailer one or two that has... Yeah. Um, like, is it Superman, Cyborg and some other ones? Yeah, I think, I think most of the Justice League is in it as well. That's going to be really cool to see like all the Lego Justice League. I think that's going to be awesome. Um, the humour in it... What? Well, I wonder if they'll get Tatum and um, <coughs> Jonah yeah. Hill back to do Green Lantern and Superman yeah. then, if they're both in it. Yeah, could be an interesting little cameo. Yeah, could be interesting. Um, uh, but the humour in it, I think, is what I'm looking forward to most. Because um, they're taking quite a serious, brooding character uh, and just completely... <laughs> Not Lego Batman. <laughs> <laughs> no, and then just completely turning <laughs> it on his head. Um, what about Adam West? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and in one of the trailers as well, it references all the Batmans that he's... That he's been in. Oh, yeah, like so it's like 1998, 1995, 2002. <laughs> like, the phases he's been in. So that's going to be that's gonna be hilarious. Um, so, yeah, personal highlight for me in the trailer was probably uh, the uh, the little, when he's when Robin's going around saying, Oh, can I go with the, the Batmobile? And oh, no, the Bat car I can. <laughs> he's like, Batman's got literally every single version of uh, motor transport ever. Uh, as long as it's got Bat in front of it, yeah, it's fine. So, uh, so yeah, I think that's gonna, it's going to be a really, really good film. Apparently, he's Morgan Freeman's favourite Batman, Lego Batman. I think he's probably one of my favourite Batman. If I, if You've I'm changed. <laughs> oh, no, I'm sorry, he's... Uh, no, he's no Val Kilmer. <laughs> Christian Bale is sitting there somewhere going, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. I put so much effort into that. <laughs> Christian, he's right out of my face. I think he is. Christian, if you're watching, we're sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, right, no, 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 that, that is it. Uh, on that note, obviously, if you've enjoyed this, if you've found it informative or anything, uh, any comments, like, subscribe, like share, the like button all that around kind of James stuff. Rude um, <laughs> and obviously, yeah. we'll be back maybe next week with uh, another episode of All Things Geek. So, thanks very much for watching and take care. Thanks, guys. Bye.